Although the video is about an amino acid and its impact on lowering blood glucose, in this particular case, the amino acid is a singular amino acid known as alanine. In order to get a true appreciation of how alanine is helping reduce blood glucose, you have to understand what adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase is, in short, AMPK. Bring your attention to the following chart. You see that circle there from everything from anti-aging, muscle energy, you name it basically. It gives a whole line of different things, uh, even to, for example, lipid metabolism, protein synthesis, and so on and so forth. It is just incredibly fascinating. And not only that, it's redundant in its effect, meaning other studies have shown it to do the exact same thing as in the case in the second chart there. Adenosine mono, uh, uh, monophosphate activated protein kinase, again, AMPK is a fascinating substance. And alanine helps raise that. Even better, by raising this beneficial uh, AMPK, it also lowers the blood glucose. So I want to expand the realm out just, just outside of being beneficial in regard to type 2 diabetes, but as well as being beneficial to a whole myriad of other elements uh, in the body, especially if you're deficient in AMPK. So with that in mind, and a proper perspective obtained, let us proceed right into the study as followed, titled, Nutrients May Reduce Blood Glucose Levels. Study in cell animals showed that one amino acid can provide brief beneficial effects. AMPK is an enzyme in cells throughout the body that is activated when nutrient supplies are low or in response to exercise. This explains the researchers. AMPK then caused a lot of beneficial changes in the cell, as we stated prior in the charts that you saw, turning on genes that serve to increase energy production. AMPK is a good thing, and it could also be activated by a variety of treatments for type 2 diabetes, such as metformin. So we're looking at an amino acid that kind of simulates the effect of metformin, uh, hopefully in a healthier way. But to proceed, that raised the question, according to the researcher, Patty and her colleagues, could an amino acid switch on this beneficial enzyme? The investigators began their study by testing many amino acids in rat liver cells. Alanine was the one amino acid that was consistently able to activate AMPK. The researchers then confirmed that AMPK was produced in some of its usual metabolic effects after alanine activation. Additionally, activation could be seen in human and mouse liver cells, human and mouse liver cells, as well as rat liver cells, and was present with either high or low levels of glucose in the cells. All right, let's proceed to the chart real fast where you can see all the benefits of alanine in regard to the control group and so on and so forth. The dosage that they used in this particular trial orally with mice was one and a half grams per kilogram. Now keep in mind in animal models, it's always gonna be a little higher initially. However, as technology advances, let's say for example, uh, one of the studies I wanna do is on resveratrol and lung cancer, where they enhance the effects of resveratrol through, maybe through nasal inhalation dramatically, or for example, with CoQ10, where they increase the water solubility by utilizing something called cyclodextrin. So technology first establishes it can do the job, then it finds a way of delivering that better or in lower or more maintainable dosage. Next, scientists gave alanine by mouth to mice and found that levels of AMPK rose in the animals. Moreover, if mice ate alanine before they received a dose of glucose, the resulting blood glucose levels were significantly lower. And while glucose metabolism often behaves quite differently in lean mice than in obese mice, the mechanism was seen in both groups of mice. Common denominator, AMPK. Following up, the Jocelyn team found that the glucose lowering didn't seem to be driven by increases in insulin secretion or decreases in the secretion of glucagon, a hormone that increases glucose. Instead, AMPK was boosting glucose uptake in the liver and decreasing glucose release. Further experiments in cells demonstrated that the activated enzyme was altering the Krebs cycle, a central component of cell metabolism. Citric acid cycle, Krebs cycle, ATP cycle, whatever college you went to, however they call it. All right, but to proceed, we're gonna go straight to the abstract and because the abstract concludes it properly as opposed to the public release. Taken together, quoting the researchers, 
Our data suggests a new role for alanine as an energetic sensor which activates the AMPK pathway and acutely reduces blood glucose. These effects are likely to be particularly relevant during conditions of energetic stress such as fasting or exercising. When circulating AL alanine levels are increased, alanine and downstream metabolites modulate cellular energetics, thus promoting AMPK-dependent catabolic responses to restore energy homeostasis. Sustained elevations in alanine may also enhance glucogenesis as described in classical glucose alanine cycle, ultimately promoting restoration of muscle energetics. Further studies will be needed to determine whether impairments of the ALA and H3 metabolism and AMPK induction contribute to susceptibility to metabolic disease and to find whether intermittent administration of alanine could be used therapeutically to enhance glucose tolerance, meaning human clinical trials. So a really nice lead into the promise of a single amino acid, alanine. AMPK, you're going to see in a lot of anti-aging supplements, muscle supplements, as far as energy and endurance, so on and so forth, because it does quite, uh, or I should say responsible for quite a myriad of interactions in the body. If you're deficient, a lot of problems occur at the same time, or I should say in the same light. However, though, alanine, AMPK increases, great study showing that relation, correlation, a causative effect, and I look forward, more, look forward to seeing more research in the future in regard to it and see if they can lower that dose from one and a half grams per kilogram. Again, it's animal models, they always tend to start high. If the lower dose can have just a beneficial effect in humans as one and a half grams per kilogram currently shown in a particular study in this animal model. Again, for Aperture Channel, signing off. Look forward to see you all again in seven days. Thank you very much for listening. Hope you find this information use the UI citation will be there for you to follow to look into on your own. And as always, thank you. Catch that. Bye.